It's November. November? <laughs> it's August 4th, 2007, and I'm up here in... 24. It's August 24th, 2007, and uh, Brendan, I can't speak at all. My ears are popping as I speak. <laughs> It's August 24th, 2007, and I'm up at the top of the Santa Monica Mountains in Malibu on the Backbone Trail. And I just did a two-hour run with Brendan Brazier, who many of you may know because Brendan is also a prominent vegan athlete who eats mostly raw fruits and vegetables and whatnot and grains. And uh, Brendan's got a great book out called The Thrive Diet, which is available in Canada right now and on Amazon. So he can talk about that if he wants. And we just did this killer run on the Backbone Trail, which goes over the tops of the Santa Monica Mountains for about 100 miles or more from the ocean all the way into the middle of Los Angeles. Great, great run. So we just finished the run, and something really interesting occurred to me. I haven't been able to run two hours since probably February or January of this past year. As I've been modifying my training plans, I've been increasing the intensity of my runs. Right now, my easy pace, as I said in one of my earlier blogs, is a mile of 6 minutes and 40 seconds. So to do a two-hour run at 6.40 pace, that's a really, really, really hard run, and I haven't been able to do that. The longest run that I've managed is about an hour and a half. Well, Brendan and I today went out at a much more conservative pace, uh, probably about a nine-minute pace on a mountain trail which would probably equate to an 8 minute, 820 pace on the road. And very, very comfortable, and two hours was easy. So I probably could have extended that to a three or even a four hour run and been very comfortable. And I'm thinking that way back when I first started this journey, a lot of the runs that I did were plus two hours, three hours, and they were at about the pace I did today. So here I am thinking that I don't have endurance anymore, and what it really comes down to is, the hard training that I'm doing is just preventing me from running those long distances, but if I were to slow down, I have the same endurance I had before, probably even better. And uh, when we finished the run, we just chowed like you can't even imagine. So, Brendan, tell them what we ate just now. Well, I ate two grapefruit, a few bananas, some nuts, some raw granola that Tim made. It was really good. Um, coconut water, which is really good after a warm day out in the mountains for sure and just some regular water <clears throat> it's really filling those grapefruits are big and uh he's forgetting the plums oh yeah plums plums were good too grapefruit were my favorite though nice and sour on a hot day tastes really good and the dulse and some dulse too for lack of <laughs> likes yeah don't want to forget that so how many pounds of food did you think you just ate i don't know five something like that yeah, we just ate for probably the last half hour. About that, yeah. About half an hour and several pounds of food, maybe three to five pounds of food. Most of it is water food. You know, like food has a lot of water in it, so we're getting a lot of our water back that way, but a lot of food. But I feel good. I don't feel full. just goes right in and gives you what you need. So tell us about your uh, the book and how that applies to what we just did and ate. Yeah, the book, Thrive Diet, it came out in March in Canada, published by Penguin. It comes out in the U.S. in hardcover, published by Perseus in January of 08. Um, but you can get it on Amazon right now. And there's about 100 recipes there. There's a sports-specific section as well that's for bars that are raw. You're just making a food processor really easy with dates and hemp and flax and all kinds of good stuff that's really easy to make. And then you can just bring them with you, have them before, have them after. There's sport drink recipes. There's um, recovery smoothies, sport drinks you can make with coconut water and um, a bit of lemon zest and lime zest and uh, date blended in. Really simple, tastes great, easy to make. Um, so lots of really simple, good, healthy recipes, basically. Brennan, what are your um, future athletic accomplishments? What do you do? You have goals, or are you kind of leaving the athletic world behind you and now moving into being a speaker and author? And what's your uh, what's your goal for the future? Right now I'm really focusing on the, the book tour. I did a spring Canadian book tour and I do another one starting in September that will go September, October for Canada and then of course January starting in the US. So that's really taking a lot of my time right now. But the great thing about traveling is that obviously you can run as well, you can run anywhere. So I get up early, go for a run, go to the gym later in the day. So I'm staying pretty fit. Biking and swimming not doing so much of right now. But as far as running goes, I want to run competitively next year. I want to get back into that, just stay fit. But but also, I'd like to run a good marathon within the next couple of years anyways. Just 
work from the base I have and just try and build up again. Probably give myself three months of really good training to um, to run a reasonably good time, and and um, I just really enjoy that. And also now the amount of running I'm doing is maybe 75 minutes five times a week, which is just enough to um, to stimulate thought, which really helps me with um, with the tour and with um, being creative. And it doesn't tire me out if I run for couple hours, like if I did a run like I, Tim and I did today, every day, I'd be too tired later in the day to get a lot of work done. So I don't want to do that too often. I want to make sure that it just, it's just enough training to actually help me with my focus, which right now is the book tour. How old are you and what is a good marathon time for you right now? I'm 32. Good marathon time. Well, when I was 24, I ran 229. And my base is better now, of course, because I, I run consistently. So if I get that speed in, and really put in some few good months. I figure I could run in the, the low 220s, and I think if over the next little while, because endurance athletes don't peak until late 30s, even early 40s in some cases, if you say injury free, and if your diet's really good, like raw and, and vegan, of course, and you can really, um, really run strong later in life. So I think in my late 30s, I should be able to run possibly even sub 220, I think is, is perfectly reasonable main advice to anyone out there that wants to be an athlete, that wants to be vegan or go partially raw, entirely raw, any uh, words of advice that like something that really stands out, a thought? Yeah, I would say if you want to um, you want to get into this, of course I really recommend it. Eating more plant-based foods and lots of raw food really helps reduce inflammation which helps speed recovery which means you can train more. You can improve faster. That's one of the big things I found. But start slow. Don't don't jump into it overnight because change is stress, any kind of change. Even if it's positive, your body takes a while to adapt and just let it happen slowly. Um, New Year's resolutions, as, as you probably know, usually aren't that successful because you've done one thing one way up till a certain day and then you've changed everything and it shocks your body. But just gradually build into it. Just start eating more fruit and vegetables and salads and, and don't even think about eliminating other things. Just bring in more of the good stuff and naturally the old stuff will just fall away. And, and you'll notice over time, once your body cleanses and detoxes, you will start improving. You, you will feel better in the morning. You will have more energy. You won't need to sleep as much. And you'll perform better. But start slow. But important thing, of course, is start. And don't, don't be afraid to take st small steps and, and know that they are helpful, even though they may seem really small in the beginning. But even a year for some people to, to transition is fine. Don't, don't be in any hurry. I think that's great advice. And you will see changes. You will see changes in the short term. You'll see changes in the long term. You'll see changes pretty quickly just by adding more fruits and veggies into your diet. And I think Brendan's absolutely right. This is what I've been saying all along. Add to your diet until there's no more room for the other stuff. Never take away, because you're mentally, you'll react to that too. Mentally, the part of your brain that's still two years old will say, no, I want my cheeseburger. Well, if you never say, I can't have a cheeseburger, well, then your mind's not going to do that. But if you keep just adding more whole foods to your diet, Eventually, there's not going to be room for that cheeseburger anymore, and you won't want it. So, <clears throat> Brendan's first book, called Thrive, is one of the great inspirations for what I'm doing. In fact, when I started this journey a year and a half ago, Brendan was one of the first people that I met. I did a search online to find other raw athletes, because I thought, you know, I didn't know any. Are there any out there in the world? And Brendan was the first person I came across. Uh, so we've been talking now since the beginning of this journey for me, and his book was a great inspiration and really helped me along the way to the point where I am now. So I highly recommend going out and getting Thrive, but in the second book, The Thrive Diet, Brendan has taken what he wrote in the first book and expanded it even further, given a lot more information, a lot of recipes, great stuff, totally up to date. So go out there and get The Thrive Diet. Highly recommend it. And that's not just an endorsement, that's me really believing in this product and who Brendan is as a person.